Right, so today is uh, 6th of July, 2022. <clears throat> I've just parked up. I'm hoping to get down to a little bit of river bank that I used to go fishing with, with my dad when uh, I was a little boy. So we're going back to the 50s and I used to take my son uh, in the 70s when he was a little lad. And I'd like to see what the river looks like now. Um, the farm is named Sheepwash. Uh, I always knew it as Pickers when I was a kid. And um, my dad worked on that farm um, back in the 1950s. Yeah, this little video is definitely a bit of nostalgia. Um, and it's a little bit about my dad. I mean, um, he had quite a varied working life. Uh, I remember him when I was a little boy working on this farm. Uh, which was a poultry farm back then, or mainly poultry. I think it had some sheep and bits and pieces. And uh, Mr. Phillips, who owned it, used to let his um, his land out to other people. And um, yeah, I, I also, funnily enough, I think the guy that owned it was named Mr. Trumper, but I'm not certain. I worked briefly for him when I was about 17 on the same same land. So I've got a bit of history with it. There's... Um, there's quite a lot I like about coming back here. I've been wanting to come for years, but as I said, uh, I used to come with my dad in the 1950s um, fishing, and a boy in the 70s. But also, as a little boy, we'd come down for family days out. And also, in 1958, when my dad worked on this farm, we, um, we had a week's holiday here on the river, uh, a field next to the river. The farmer, Mr Phillips, had left, let us have it for for ourselves, it was, the grass had been cut. My dad had cut steps down into the river. We had a rowing boat. I could swim, fish, go across the other side in the woods. I mean, you know, seven year old boy, what more do you want? It was uh, idyllic. Uh, my dad obviously didn't stay on the farm. He left the farm, had quite a varied career, really. He started building, um, had his own firm for a while, managed another company. And then I don't know how this happened, but he sort of got into astrology, became an astrologer and also uh, ran a magazine back in the 80s with my mum called Beyond Science. So quite a varied change for him. But I've got a couple of little anecdotes about him and my boy. That I So as I say, this is purely nostalgia for myself. But if anybody wants to watch the video, that's entirely up to them. So as I said, I've parked up. The farm is sheep wash and it's... Um, you know, it's not as it was when I was a boy. I tried to find out who owned it, so to ask permission, but I'm just gonna see if I can sneak down to the river bank and do this little bit of filming. No harm done, no damage. I'm a country boy at heart, so uh, let's see. Uh, when I was a lad, this was just um, just part of, a, part of the field, to be honest. So I'm hoping I can find a way in where I want to go. Let's see. Well, it's certainly different to uh, how I remember it. I've, uh, I've just, I've just come through that field along the edge and see this pathway, which I'm thinking, I'm thinking should take me down to where we used to, where we used to go. It's so peaceful, as I remember it from that point of view. Quiet. All this thicket, all this growth wasn't here when I was a kid. That was all uh, open fields for various things, but uh, obviously not farmed as it was. There was certainly nothing like this. And um, I'm hoping that I can get through to the particular field that I want to get to. Let's say this is bearing round for my right, which I prefer it not to. <laughs> Right, looks like we might be getting somewhere. I think I need to get into the field the other side of this thicket. So I'm gonna have to find a way through it. Right, this looks like my crossing point. I've just come through here. <laughs> no war wounds yet but there might be by the time I fought my way through there, but I'll make it. Right, well, I've made it. That's my little path that I just trod through the stinger nettles. Not even stung. And 
yes, this is the field that I remember as a boy. Right, firstly, before I look at the river, let's uh, go up here a bit. Well, back in the 1950s, there was a field there, quite a wide field, and a fence about here, along here, that um, you gained entry into this field. And just down by those trees is the, um, is the river. Little story of, um, that future generations might enjoy if they could be bothered to look at this. And um, I can remember one, one of our family trips down here and we got down to this, this field and the, the gate back in them days had sort of wire loops over a post and there was a beware of the bull sign. Of course, my dad worked here, so he knew the animals anyway, but uh, uh, bull was in the field with some cows. My dad was busy, bent over, hunched over, undoing the, the gate when the bull took a few steps toward him. My mum yelled out his name, Jim. My dad stood up abrupt very quickly and cut his head on the beware of the bull sign, which uh, maybe wasn't funny for him, but I probably found it funny at the time. But there you go, seven years old or whatever. Right, now to do what I, I came here for, and that's to video the stretch of riverbank that was my playground as a small boy. And uh, as you can see, it's just quiet and peaceful. And uh, we had a tent somewhere over there. I'll show you when we get there. And as, as I said, woods over the other side, so I could go across in the boat, play in the woods. This field, the grass was cut down short so we could kick a ball or whatever we wanted to do. Um, yeah, dad had to work in the mornings. That's what it was like back then. And had the afternoons free with the family. But it was still a great holiday, believe it or not. Right, down there, somewhere, it's the River Arran, um, which I'm assuming is probably still tidal up here. It certainly was back then. I don't know if anything could happen to stop that. But it, it certainly, as you can see where all these reeds are, that, that was river then, so it's grown over. Back in, back in them days, the river board used to come up and cut the weeds back and catch them in a net. It was always tidy. Uh, all this thicket of hedge here was was not there. In fact, where that ditch was that I crossed coming down there and went into the river there as a small boy, um, I used to like to fish for perch there, but it doesn't look like I'm even gonna be able to see it today. Well, there's the mighty River Arran up here the other side of Balborough. As you can see, it is narrowed considerably over the years and um, I certainly remember the river being back back there somewhere uh, certainly when it was high tide but I've I've had to tread my way down down to get here my god it has changed rewilding as you can see it's been left pretty much to nature along the river's edge so I can't walk along the bank, right along the bank as I would, would have done um, even when I used to bring my eldest son fishing down here. I can remember having a swim down here where this, these bushes are. But, uh, yeah, struggle to get down here now, but um, certainly could back then with my son. I guess, uh, I guess somebody obviously likes to walk, walk this field. I mean, it's, as you can see, it's not farmed as such, but um, bath there makes it easy for walking. This was another a good place to swim, uh, to swim, to fish. I used to get a, a few chub here. Can't even see the water at the moment. Might be able to see the river a bit better here in a minute. And just about make out the river. So I used to be able to get right down to all these places along here, but it's obviously been left for rewilding, which is lovely for nature. But it shows how the river courses change. 
and change they do because the uh, River Arran hasn't always entered the sea at Little Hampton, as I once thought. It, um, it used to work its way east and uh, ran into the River Ada somewhere near Lansing and went into the sea there. Then they broke away. The Ada went east and uh, the Arran's made its way west. But of course, with all the modern, um, you know, along the waterway, say at Littlehampton and, and Shoreham and all these places now, there's plenty of concrete and things to keep the river on course. But as you can say, when you get into country and uh, people have left it to nature, it changes completely different. I can remember fishing here with my son, Stephen. I don't know if you'll watch this, Steve. Um, I'm pretty sure we were sitting somewhere down here when that massive thunderstorm broke out. And uh, back then, I didn't have a lot of money, so I didn't have big posh umbrellas or igloos or anything like that. I had a black oilskin coat, jacket, and um, I had external toe cap boots because I worked at the brick face at the brickyard at the time. And we were sitting here and the water was way, way back in here somewhere. And uh, tide was coming in, water was sort of moving up to their feet. And uh, the, the rain was lashing down, the lightning was flashing. And uh, the boys huddled with me under my oilskin jacket. And he pointed out that uh, I had steel toe cap boots, which would conduct the lightning quite well. I don't know whether it was wishful thinking on his part. <laughs> It's certainly almost unrecognisable from uh, from when, when I came in the 1950s and the 1970s, but I can't believe how much it's changed. I just can't get close to it. I do believe that, um, and I'm pretty certain I'm right, that the, the River Arran was once called the River Tarrant. Uh, that may have been when it um, flowed into the Ada. And... Um, yeah, uh, if you do the walk from Amberley to Arundel along the river bank and you cross the Gurkha Bridge, bridge, I'm pretty sure that Gurkha Bridge is over the old water course of the Arran. This bit here that I can't get anywhere near, I used to get some nice rudd and roach when I fished here as a little kid. Well, it may have been by this tree. Clouded memory. Obviously, with the tools, I could get down to the river, but... Um, as it is not my property, I'm not going to do that. I'll try and leave it as I found it. <laughs> but it's grown, it's just grown and changed so much. Now, this is the pit that holds all the real memories. <laughs> Nothing like it. This is where we had our tent pitched in 1958. And this piece here, if anybody has seen the photograph, I posted it on the Paulbra Facebook page of my dad fishing. This is exactly the spot he was fishing. And uh, we had steps cut down to the river then and uh, his rowing boat, etc., etc. But I mean, I don't know if I'm gonna get close enough to even see it. Well, I couldn't really leave today without coming down to the bit where we had camped. And this area here is where, probably where I learned to swim, to be honest. Um, it's so narrow now. What, what I'm standing on down here was was part of the bank, a part, part of the river back then. And um, somewhere where those, those rushes, uh, not rushes, those are standing up there. It's probably where my dad was, had his boat. And somewhere about here is where he was, was in that photograph of him fishing down here. Um, he's had some good pike out here. Actually, another funny little story for my grandchildren. Um, when we were on holiday, so I'd have been about seven, and my dad had a pike rod set up in his rowing boat, which was, as I say, moored up about there somewhere. And um, the dog was also tied up with a bit of rope, so he couldn't follow my dad to work. And he gnawed through what he thought was the rope holding, holding him, but... Uh, he actually gnawed through the rope holding the boat and the boat started to drift and my first thought was to grab for the bank so I jumped for the bank 
giving the boat a hefty push. Uh, but I've forgotten that my four-year-old sister was also in the boat with me at the time. They were different days back then. Anyway, I had to run up to the farm and get somebody to come round across Pallingham Quay and along the river to get the boat. But by the time they got there, actually it was Mr. Phillips, the guy that owned the, uh, the farm. By the time he got there, somebody had been walking, picked up the rope, threw it back across to my mum and she pulled the boat back across. I wasn't very popular. I'm pretty sure this is probably the exact spot where my dad was standing. So any of you that have seen the photograph and, and can see what the river was like here then, well, this is it now. Whatever you want to say though, it's beautiful, peaceful. It's hard to think of how many people I know personally that this river has taken over the years. A bit further down perhaps, but uh, only, only down in Pulborough itself, very dangerous river. But it looks so sweet, doesn't it? Well, I've made it back up and I've done what I wanted to do. I've had my nostalgia trip and uh, to think our tent was there and it was a great holiday, 1958. Who would do that now, eh? <laughs> it doesn't look, doesn't look like we get to see the last stretch of river that in this in this field. It's just so overgrown. So you can imagine if uh, if we didn't interfere with the rivers at all, left Mother Nature to itself, um, didn't put mac walls up and concrete here, there, and everywhere in the town, the rivers, God knows where they'd be and what shape they'd be now either. But, uh, I mean, this undergrowth, I'd imagine if you had time to just sit here, find a little spot, sit, probably find some nice, see some nice kingfishers. Right, this is the, uh, the end of this particular field, and then it, it went on to somebody else's farm. I don't know who owns that. I don't know who owns any of it now. But this section here from probably, well, from this fence, and um, to about there somewhere was completely clear and open and it was sloped down and if there was cattle in the field they used to go down there to drink so it hasn't been touched here for some years that's for sure well that's my nostalgia trip I think unless I'll see anything else on the way back to the car I seem to have uh, hopefully found myself a better way back to the car but uh, just thought I'd do a little bit of the scenery. You know, I certainly don't remember this being here when I was a kid. I guess it must have been, but... Hmm. I'll have to ask Stephen if he remembers it. I certainly don't. It's just beautiful. I'm glad I walked back this way. Perhaps I always came down a little to my left, i.e. through that field there. And this not being needed, I just didn't see it. The lily pads there. Just beautiful. And it looks like I've found a more sensible crossing point. Bye-bye. Well, that was a much quicker route back. <laughs> uh, not quite so much undergrowth for me to go through, but of course I wasn't to know that at the time. Um, almost back at the car. I've really enjoyed my trip down memory lane. I'm hoping that uh, at least my eldest son, Steve, will watch the video as he used to come fishing there with me. Of course, my dad can't because he passed away at only 59 years old. But, uh, such a shame. 
and maybe in the future great grandchildren or even you know grandchildren or even great grandchildren might uh, have a have a little look and laugh at their old granddad or great granddad or whatever but whether they do whether they don't i don't care i've enjoyed doing this this morning and i'm in desperate need of a shower now so long